save. So let's just send out the notifications. Bum, 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 bum. Channel, copy link, Twitter. Uh, quick off schedule stream to do a mini review the GLF1 DRZV2 and SDR trike. Come visit us at blah. Bam, done. Okay, awesome. Let's fire my lasers. Okay, so hopefully the video quality is all right. I suspect it's not, but that's about the best we can do at the moment. So I'm still filling with the settings. Um, as you can see, we've got a couple of cars out at the moment. Uh, in the middle there, there is the SDR Racing, which is it? SDR Racing. Oh, let me check the box. Um, yeah, SD, or SD Racing. So if you can get that in shot. So you can see the picture of the trike on there. So it's a three-wheeler, uh, rather impressive. Just got it the other day and um, funnily enough, got it with electronics, which is not something I normally do, but um, glad I did. I've now thrown most of those electronics out. Um, well, that, that's not true. It, it was with a came with a brush DC motor, and I put that aside. Um, and the ESC, the ESC had a didn't seem to have a brake. It just seemed to cut into reverse almost immediately. I suspect it was an ESC for a drone. Um, but I'm keeping that aside for other projects. Like I got the electronics primarily for that, and the fact that it came with a servo. Um, speaking of servos, I swapped it out. Um, I was having some issues with it centering. It turns out it's just inherent to the chassis. Um, I put a much better servo on there and it centers a bit better, but still not perfect. Um, I'm very tempted to go back to the original servo just because a new servo I put in there is a, a bit smaller. It doesn't quite fit as snugly. And I managed to put on the Atomic DRZ, um, so the version one DRZ servo horn onto it. Uh, and it turned out there was a good deal of flex in the plastic steering horn just just because of the steering geometry. Um, and going to a metal servo horn really made it a lot better. Um, there, the left and the right turn on it are not symmetrical. And when you're turned to the right, um, the servo can struggle or it actually bends the servo horn when coming out of it in, very, in certain positions when you're at, you're at max, um, max angle. So, yeah, very tempted to go back to that. We'll see what happens. I just cleaned up the electronics, so I'm having fun with it at the moment. Um, went brushless with it as well. Um, although that said, it doesn't take much power to get this thing going. So I've only got a 3,000, uh, 3,500 kV motor in it now. Um, I'm just using the Kyosho green motor and it zips along. I barely use 50% of the power. Um, a lot of fun, not a lot of braking. Uh, I'm using an atomic uh, ESC from the AMZ in there, the metal uh, ATM branded one. Um, and that's been pretty good, um, but no braking. And I need a programming card for it, which I don't think you can actually get them anymore. So not sure what I'm gonna do with that. Uh, I kind of like the idea that I can't brake on it, but in the same breath, this is a chassis that does need a bit of braking. Um, you'll see what I mean when we start racing with it. Uh, on the right hand side in the blue, and let me just pop off the lid here. Now, I am actually struggling with a very, very badly mangled toe. You can't see it, but I've actually got a, um, a hand warmer under my sock there just to keep the uh, blood flow to the, uh, the toe there. So I am hobbling around a bit, and I'm going to try and avoid having to get up too much. But as you can see there, I've got the DIZ in the, uh, the gold with the carbon fiber. Uh, looks nice. Uh, we're running an Ensotec uh, S-Wave um, ESC, so that's a smaller of the two. Uh, that'll go up to a 5,500 kV motor. Um, but I'm running it with a 3500 uh, kV Ensotec V2 motor. Uh, it runs very, very smoothly. Um, I have had some binding issues, and I originally blamed that on the DRZ. And I am still to a degree, but I've now put the uh, same motor on the F1 car over there. And um, that's also had some binding issues. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, but I'm working on the clearance on those, and... 
I'm actually shaving down the uh, the pinions and the gears a bit because I think it's just a gear mesh. On the GLZ, it's because the motor's not sitting straight. Uh, the rear chassis doesn't hold the motor exactly how I want to, but I'll get into that later. But back to the DIZ. So we're running uh, Entertech Motor, Entertech uh, ESC. Uh, we're running a... Uh, I think, is it called a... A year racing uh, hack... Um, to do a gyro. Um, I've got mixed feelings about that. Um, I have been using the o Onins I think it's Oninsky ones, and they're brilliant. Um, I'm very, very tempted to plug it into here and see how it goes. But the reason I'm using the Air Racing one is it takes the micro sized uh, connectors. In fact, do I have one laying around to my left here? Might not have. Oh, there you go. So it takes uh, these smaller JST white connectors rather than the black standard. Uh, three pin that most people are using and the reason for that is I'm using a DAS Micro um, NB4 compatible uh, receiver so if we get up up real close uh, you can see it up there uh, it's really really ultra tiny the clarity at this range is not too good but that's because I've actually got auto focus turned off um, and I've got it focused on the track itself so not much I really want to do about that. I don't want to be adjusting the settings too much. Actually, how are my audio levels? They're clipping a bit, so I need to back up a bit. Let me adjust the micro and not get too excited. Uh, so what else do we have here? We've just got like a nanotech motor. And I'm running the... Um, what brand are these? Uh, AOZ, I think. No, AGF RC electronic motors. Um, they are the... Purple motors. Uh, once again, I'm not going to have focus on that. Uh, these are the same ones that uh, Beaver Hobbies recommends, and they're good. Now, one of the interesting things is if I can find it, uh, I'm looking for an atomic. Oh, here we go. So I've got one of the atomic branded uh, servos. Um, I've had this for a while because I wanted to test it. Um, I actually did a, a test with the servo tester on stream and these two motors are actually They're the same screws on the bottom um, The exact same ones if you look really really close under a magnifying glass They're the exact same dimensions uh, These pinions at the top are exactly the same um, The whole spacing is the same the only difference is the cutouts, but in terms of uh, response speed, they're also identical. So I've got a feeling, yeah, the Atomic is just a rebranded one of these uh, purple ones. Um, but I just grabbed the purple ones because I can get them both in the JST plug and the normal size plug. And they're really, they're much easier to get off Banggood. And as much as Banggood is unreliable, they are still light years ahead of Miracle Mart, who I will bang on about having some of the most horrible uh, support I've ever dealt with with an online company. Um, I've had so many issues with them, it's not funny. But uh, we'll move on from there. Um, so that, that's about a rundown. I mean, this is a generic 300 mil, uh, milliamp battery. Um, all my batteries I solder this particular connector on, as you can see here. Um, I do use a different connector on the new trike, but that's only for the motor. Uh, because with a lot of these motors, I actual, actually use these same connectors to go to the ESC, so I can swap them around. Um, the problem is that if you're using the same plugs, you could inadvertently plug them in. So that's why I've started from the trike onwards using a new triangular plug, which I'll, I'll show you in a minute. Um, it's really nice. So the wiring job, this is where I need to get some more high quality pictures of it. But uh, look at that. I've managed to get all the electronics below the chassis plate, which is really, really good, apart from the ESC, but that doesn't matter, matter to be honest. Go from the other side. You can see the hack slider gyro there. You can see the back of the ESC there. Uh, I've hot glued it in here because the failure you most commonly get with these ESCs is breaking the wire and having them snap off. So I've super glued it in for some support. And you can see I've got the motor wires on this side and they actually route underneath this carbon plate in the back. So from the top, especially when it's all plugged in and all wired down, very, very clean setup. Um, I've got the cables through the front here. They don't actually bind on anything, which is good. The uh, steering is super smooth. Um, the other thing that's of note is that once I start getting going around and actually racing on the track with this one, 
I really suck at rear-wheel drive drifting, so I do apologize for that. You're going to have to put up with it. Um, please send me some advice because uh, I actually had a quick look, and there's not a lot of uh, good introduction guides on how to do rear-wheel drifting. So I've been looking at other people's footages, footage, and I've got some ideas, but I'm still learning. Um, I've only got a couple of hours in it. Um, I suspect I'm going to need another five to ten hours before I get to a decent level, uh, but we're getting there slowly. So. Let's put the DIZ down for a moment. Um, and what do we want next? Let's talk about the trike. Ah, oh, so this trike. This trike has blown me away. Um, I purchased it on a whim because I really wanted a three wheel vehicle. Um, and it has probably been the most fun I've ever had with a Mini Z sized vehicle. Uh, <laughs> which I was not expecting. Like, I expected it to be a, a bit of fun, but this thing turns like crazy, and it's super quick. I can't wait till I can get the body uh, on it. Um, there's also a Reliant Robin chassis, if you're into that thing. Uh, I'm very tempted to go off and order one, but uh, for the moment, I'm going to just stick with the uh, standard body it comes with, which is a three-wheel... Um, I don't know what you call it exactly, but I'm just going to call it a trike body. So it's a, a bike platform with three wheels and you've got a, uh, oh, it's a sidecar setup. That's it. So you've got a second rider who actually moves their weight left and right to help you turn in. But the, the steering being asymmetrical. Um, so it turns that way more than it turns that way. Um, and so you get asymmetrical steering characteristics. And that's an interesting challenge. Um, it also means that it's more prone to flip over in one direction than in the other, and this will flip over at high speeds, which makes it even more fun. There is a lot of skill in driving this, um, and even more skill in driving it quickly, especially when it comes to corners. You really, there's a lot of gliding and braking you have to do, but, um, you'll probably notice with the steering arm, it runs almost straight up at this angle, straight up. And I've actually had to back out the steering angle at a couple of degrees, just because when it is uh, perfectly straight, the servo can't push the wheel back out. It tries and forces the wheel forward rather than uh, in a rotational motion. So you do have to be very, very careful with your endpoints with this vehicle. Um, but once you dial it in and you work out what the chassis is capable of in terms of endpoints, it's very, very capable. Um, I did have some binding issues. Um, the lower mount here, the lower screw had a bit of thread lock and that actually got into the um, uh, the brass bushings there and was causing the front to lock up. So just moving it back and forth by hand uh, a bit loosened that up and then the servo and the steering was super smooth. Um, the bearings on the front wheel are crazy, crazy good. Like that, that wheel keeps on spinning. So if I flick that, well, actually I'll put it to the mic so you can hear it. Uh, let's... and it stopped. So that goes forever. So uh, it runs super, super smooth. I did have to tighten a bit, but that's not much of a problem. The suspension on it is also really, really, really super good. Um, really kind of happy with the, the front end, apart from the steering geometry. Um, I really think the steering geometry needs to be um, straight up and then levered to turn this wheel just so you don't get that straight binding issue with the wheel um but i, I don't know maybe maybe that's part of the the appeal of this chassis so you can see i've got the uh, the atomic uh, chassis here i've done some rewiring there so this is that uh triangular uh, it's better if we see it at the single this triangular connector and I'm, when i undo the straps i don't have the triangular connector at both ends i've just got it at one end because the pins on the standard mini z generic motor plug right into the female end of this <coughs> which is one of the reasons I use these plugs so I can use the standard mini z motors with this or I can use uh, especially wide up and so tech motors it allows me to swap back and forward it's super simple so um that works well then I've got a, another 300 milliamp battery in there that's all taped down with the provided strap and I've got a full-sized nb4 receiver here um, I don't have any more of the micro units because I use one the DAS micro unit on the glf1 and the DRZ. Um, I've got three more of the Fly Skies coming, but like uh, the Desk Micro ones have been awesome. Um, 
if the desk micro ones ever go on special, and I suspect the fly sky ones won't, I'd probably just pick up more desk micros. And I'm fully expecting someone from fly sky to put in a comment that why aren't you supporting fly sky? And my answer to that is, well, I don't really have an answer to be honest. Like the, I was impressed that they matched the price of the desk micro ones. So that's why I've bought three of those. Um, but I mean, their receivers, the NB4 compatible receivers are just expensive. There's no getting around that fact. And I'm willing to pay that price, but if someone comes, if any of them come on special, that's going to be the ter determining factor rather than any sort of brand loyalty. Um, although that said, like what FlySky has been doing, absolutely incredible. I'm, I'm super happy with all their controllers because um, I've got a Paladin PL18 for drones and then I've got the NB4 for the ground vehicles. So, so let's go back to the chassis. Uh, I've got the carbon fiber version. Uh, the FR4 one is cheaper. Um, and likely just as responsive. Um, you get a bit of flex there, so it's got an integrated rear mount. That's a standard Mini Z mount. Um, this is from a Mini Q. Um, I've tried it with a Mini Z um, back end. It's fine. I just continued on with the uh, the Mini Q ones because I didn't have many of these rear end. Um, uh, I don't know if this is a low mount or a just a rear a mid mount. I think it might be the mid mount. I didn't have any of those spare. And to be honest, like this was out of the factory so well tuned that it didn't even need an upgrade. Um, I decided to upgrade it anyway. I swapped out the pin uh, pinion and I put a better diff in there, but the diff wasn't that much of an improvement. The one that comes with it is just incredible. It does leak a bit of oil, but um, I could, if you were to have a racing league, uh, this in the FRP chassis could be a very, very cheap way to get like four to eight of them and have a whole bunch of comp people compete on a track. And because it's so maneuverable, which we'll see in a couple of minutes, um, a track this size is on the smaller end, but doable. Um, the GLF-1 can get around this track fairly well because it's actually fairly maneuverable. If you're trying an MR-03 or any of the rear wheel drive mini Zs, you might struggle a bit. Um, the A uh, all wheel drive, you can do drifting on this track without too much fish. Um, but uh, this is not a good track size for grip racing. And keep in mind that these are the large, um, large panels, not the smaller panels. So I think they're about 50, it might be 50, it's either 40 or 50 centimeters by 40 or 50 centimeters. It's um, not the 30 by 30s that most people get. Um, I made a mistake when ordering. In fact, like you can probably see the box up the back, whoops, up the back there. Um, I really should hide the shipping information on that, but I'm hoping you guys can't zoom into that. Um, I just made a mistake when ordering it. Um, this is a quarter of what I've got in there. So uh, let's get onto the GLF-1 and then let's actually go off and do some racing. So, well, not racing, but let's, I'll, I'll show you how these perform because it's very rare that I get three chassis all working at the same time with such different performance characteristics. And these are probably the most distinct um, out of everything I own. Uh, they're, they're just completely op opposite each other. And I'm not going to... So th this is one of the other things. Uh, you might have been expecting a DIZ review um, last weekend. Um, I started to do a review, uh, and then had a lot of trouble actually getting the words out that I wanted to. So I had a good idea about what I wanted to say, um, but I was just struggling to get the words out. And that's just due to issues at my end. It, it does happen on occasion. I do have a lot of trouble communicating these days. Um, I have my moments. Uh, it's related to the, the double lung transplant. The, the medication does really, really bad things to you, uh, both physically and mentally. And you just have to roll with it, basically. So this is a mini review. People who are really interested in the DIZ can come in and... You know what? I'm going to turn that main mic volume down a bit. Uh, people who really wanted a review um, can come and see this uh, and then wait for the full review later on in the week. Uh, but this is meant to get my thoughts together and to get some information about how these handle out to the public so people can make a bit of a decision. Um, how long have we been going for? We've been going for 20 minutes, so... This would be a bit of a long YouTube video. Um, hopefully you've made it to this point, um, but I'll probably provide links to make it easier for people to jump around. So let's dive into the GLF one. And I ended up on camera, but that's fine. I'm not trying to hide too much. Um, 
So probably one of the most interest, interesting things about the GLF-1 and why I feel... Is that plugged in? Oh, that's the problem with the Ensotec. No, it wasn't. Okay. That's the problem with the Ensotec ESCs is they don't physically disconnect the battery. So if you forget to undo the plug, you will actually run these, um, these little packs completely dry and destroy them. So once again, you can see I've super glued the Ensotec here. I had a lot of trouble working out how to wire this one together, so I ended up putting the ESC there so I could access the button. And I put the receiver unit there. Um, normally people do it the other way around. Um, once again, well, actually this is a servo it came with. Um, Ensotec there, 3500 kV motor, uh, Desk Micro receiver, just standard Nanotech, 300 milliamp battery. Uh, once again, my favorite little yellow plugs. These are the one that Ensotech recommends, but I just like them because I can get really good leverage on them, and I don't like those fiddly little red plugs that everyone uses. Uh, titanium diff. Uh, I just had them had one laying around because um, I ordered the wrong one for the LM chassis for my 787B build. Um, so I decided to use it on my F1 car, and I thought that was rather appropriate, and I'm glad I did because this thing is an absolute beast with it in there. Um, I need to adjust the rear... Uh, so the front um, height. I've got too many spaces at the bottom and the front spoiler sits a bit too low. But that's a pretty simple affair. You just pop that out, take some spaces from the bottom, put them on the top, screw it all back together, and it adjusts the ride height. So really, really, really nice to work on. Um, in fact, everything about this chassis was just really, really nice. Um, picked this up on a whim. Um, it was on special. I think it was like the last one in RC Mart for a while. Um, and it's just been good. Uh, I've also got the Le Mans body for it, um, but I'm not going to fit that immediately. Um, yeah, uh, turns like crazy, uh, super fast, incredibly fast. In fact, I had to lower the, uh, the ratio just to slow it down a bit. Um, not really going to say much. I think we'll probably just dive into some video. Uh, let's actually start off with the GL1 because it's in my hands and I won't... If anything's going to run out of battery first, it's going to be this one, in case I accidentally did drain it. So, we plug the uh, the pack in. I've just got it sticking outside, outside, but it's not glued in, so I can move it around. Uh, just push the button. Oops. Okay, yep, so that battery is actually dead. So, luckily, a battery change is pretty quick on this. You just pop out both sides, and it should, in theory, slide out. The operative term being in theory. Uh, actually, if I move that up, then I can shuffle that forward a bit. There we go. So, as you can see, just nanotech battery. Nothing special. Uh, what am I going to steal a battery from? This actually might be a problem. So, what I might do in that case is we're going to start off with something a bit different. We're going to start off with the trike. Um, I know the trike has a nearly full charge, so we can get some lap time in it just quickly, and then I can swap the battery over. So you just flick that forward, lights up, uh, grab the NB4, power it on. Red light's gone, so it's working. And let's see if we can capture. Black on black never works too well, but. I can't actually move the wheel forward, but um, if I run it against my arm like that, you can see it, it's pretty oper pretty quick, and you can hear it. It's actually pretty quiet. Um, I don't know how it appears in camera, so we'll just put that on the ground, and I'm actually going to have to look at the floor now, so one moment. So as you can see, the turning circle when you're turning left is pretty tight. And then if we go to the right, it's a bit wider. So to the right, it turns like um, a uh, an all-wheel drive Mini Z. To the left, it turns in like some of the highest performing um, chassis. Like, uh, well, I mean like the DIZ, it's almost as tight as that. One of the interesting things is if you put enough power into it, you'll actually get one wheel off the floor. So if I can...
So it's probably a bit hard to tell at that distance, but that entire time I was actually only on two wheels. And in that, you can actually see it bouncing there. Uh, that's just a side effect of the uh, the diff. So as soon as one wheel comes off, um, that wheel in the air actually accelerates and then it lands. And because of the speed difference, it causes it to flick up and bounce again. So you do have to be careful about it um, flipping over. Let's see if I can get it to flip over. There we go. So that actually did a full flip and then landed. Um, if you don't have the body pins on, which I did add, it tends to land upside down. But for some reason, if you had the body pins, it seems to keep on rolling and land right way up, which is kind of interesting. So um, let's just drive it around a bit more. Uh, the asymmetry in the steering is actually a bit of... It's still I'm still getting used to it, so... Whoops. Actually, I want to go around the left. Yeah. So the, the asymmetry isn't so much just in terms of uh, turning circle. It's also in terms of response. So I've actually got a steering exponential. Actually, which way did I put the steering exponential? Okay, so I've backed a lot of the steering exponential off, but I've given a lot of... Um, I've made it so that minor small changes to the... At the when you initially turn the steering wheel, it only makes small changes to the wheel and then it ramps up um, over time. Um, but even that's not enough to dial out just how sharp... When, when you turn left, it turns in a lot on the left-hand side very, very quickly. So there's a couple of ways to uh, resolve that. I could actually adjust the endpoints and try and um, make the endpoints identical, but it's kind of nice having some asymmetry. And as, as I said, like, this is fairly fun and easy to drive out of the box, but I think this is one of these ones that over time will actually be quite rewarding. And if you had like a fleet of these, like four or five on a track, um, it'd be an absolutely incredible experience. So I'm using probably about 25 to 30% throttle around here. Um, as you can see, it really takes off at 100%. And this is a problem I have with the Atomic ESC. If I hit the brakes, it doesn't actually give, doesn't actually give me that much of a break. So that's why I wanted the uh, the tuning card for it. Um, but I haven't been able to find one. And it's not one of those ones where you can just program it by pushing buttons on the top. Actually, you know what? I just realized I've got this mislabeled as Battletech, so you'll just have to bear with me for a moment while I change that. That would be why that person popped into the stream a moment ago. Just chatting. One and Z's. Silly me. Okay, that's a bit better. Um, yeah, so back to where we were. So, uh, unfortunately, I can't program the ESC just by pushing buttons, but um, that's fine. You get used to just braking early and then just letting it sort of um, glide a bit. And the far the slower this thing goes, uh, sorry, the slower this goes, um, the more and the sharper the turning becomes. So as you're slowing down, um, once you hit a certain point, you actually want to hit the accelerator, accelerator again, because otherwise you just turn too quickly. So not only, do you, not only do you have to hit the corner at the right time and spot, you have to hit it at the right speed. And then once you've hit it at the right speed, you have to re-engage the throttle again so that you don't slow down even more due to the turn and get even sharper turning. So that means when you start the turn, so if you turn the steering wheel to a fixed spot left or right on the steering wheel and start the turn, as you continue through the turn, you get sharper and sharper and sharper because you end up going slower and slower and slower and getting more grip and that causes you to just dive in even deeper. So it's kind of weird. There's no linear response on this vehicle at all. It's all um, logarithmic response. And that ends up being a bit of a challenge. And luckily, the, the natural defaults where... Is natural defaults the right word? Um, I guess a sweet spot is fairly easy to attain and fairly tame. So this chassis is pretty well dialed in that, in that regard in terms of lengths and um, 
how far things turn left and right. But uh, once you get to once you learn the chassis and start modulating the turn while you're turning, um, you can get even crazier. You can do even crazier things on it. And I find it's not uncommon for me to, when going through the turns, have the uh, thing on two wheels the entire time. So. I'm still getting a bit of blurring on camera, but I can't really adjust the um, uh, the exposure anymore uh, with this amount of light. And that's the other thing: if you ex if you just gun the accelerator, uh, one wheel will come up. Uh, so if you gun the accelerator while you're turning, one wheel will, just, will come up in the air, and once you do that, you lose all power. So it's very much straight turn, straight uh, straight hammer the power. Let it glide, turn, regulate the turn, then straight and jam on the power. So coming out of the corner, you have to know when to hammer the, the power and you also have to apply power while turning just so you don't get that sharpness in, in the turn. Or maybe you do want the sharpness in the turn, like it's up to you. So a lot of fun this little chassis. Um, I'm not going to do too much with the chassis now. Um, one, I want to keep the stream a bit short. Um, the other reason is I want to quickly swap the battery over to the GLF-1 and get at least a tiny bit of footage with that. So, um, The other thing I do like about the NB4 uh, is I can set the amount of initial throttle uh, the chassis gives out. And that's very, very good because some motors don't, won't actually start moving until you apply a set amount of power. So I try to set the cars up so that as soon as even the tiniest bit of throttle is applied past the dead Signal zone, um, it uh, engages the motor. Rather than getting that cogging motion as you start to take off. Let's put you on. Okay, that turned on almost immediately. Why are you beeping? Oh, and that's right, I've got change models. So one of the other funny things I found is I am at model 15 on my NB4 and I've only got five more slots left, so. Oh, so there we go. Whoops. So as you can see, this is very, very capable of turning, um, which is really nice. Like, well, this car is quite nimble at slow speeds, so, so I'm just going to try and go as slow as I can. As you can see, I've got a bit of cogging, and that's a very, very tight turning circle. Let's go the other way. The more, more power you give it, the... Um, the more power you give it though, uh, the um, wider the turns. And I'm, I'm having some of the cogging issues at the moment, so if it doesn't always seem to be going fast, uh, that's because it hits like a, it just gets, the motor gets caught in some places. And it's actually making it a bit hard to drive. It's also actually affecting the steering. So when I get that cogging, the rear wheels don't rotate very well. Oh, let me have a... Another look. Oh, maybe that needs some grease as well. So, I mean, this is a, uh, a pretty small track. Actually, I need to dial out the um, steering response on that. Yeah, I do. Uh, what do I want? I want... So this turns very, very sharp. So I want to actually dial out the steering response. I want it to be less sharp. So I've got to turn the wheel more. It's a bit too much, so I'm at 41%. Let's dial that out to 30. Yeah, that, that's better. Not perfect, but So the problem is that this vehicle is probably a bit too fast for this track, but it's definitely almost, well, it's also at the limits of maneuverability here as well. So 
The other thing I do like about the Ensotech um, ESCs is they reverse almost immediately, which makes them so much better than uh, Mini Zeds. And it means for a track like this, if I do put myself into war like that, I can just back out very quickly and I don't have to get up or I don't have to get impatient waiting for it. So I'm going to try and hit that ball again. This is why I like uh, ping pong balls. They make, if you're trying to uh, learn to aim your mini Z and hit a, a specific point every single time, and you want that point to change just so you don't get fixated on just hitting the same spot and then overtrain yourself for that, then the, uh, the ping pong balls make a good, nice dynamic target in that regard. So. So we're just going to do some loops, and I'm going to. I've got one obstacle which I'm going to try and avoid. So, and the other thing I want to do is try and be on the throttle. One of the other interesting things about this is being due to the design of the F1 car, the nose comes up very, very quickly, but the rear wheels are nearly always in contact with the track. So I can slide up these, for example, and then just reverse out of it, which is a bit more friendly than the Mini Zs where. Once you get the front tires off the ground, it starts hinging on the rear of the body and it's very, very, you have to get up to manually reset the car basically. Now I haven't tried uh, drifting the Formula One, um, but I suspect if you set it up correctly, it would be an actually re a really, really interesting uh, drift vehicle as well. Uh, the only problem is getting tires for it is a um, not the easiest thing. Although I suppose you could just use the MRO3 tyres on it, so. But uh, yeah, super capable platform on a nice long big track. This would be wonderful. So that's that binding issue. Um, I had full throttle and was just sitting there. And it just randomly happens on occasion, so. Oh, that dug in. There we go. And it's happening again, back and forward, it's both binding in both directions. Yeah, and I can feel it. And I, I suspect it's just the, the motor itself, like being kinked slightly to the side. Um, the Ensotech motors are actually particularly bad for the bottom screw mount. And the amount of times where I've only lightly applied the screw, and it's almost like it strips out, but I'm not quite sure. Um, I think it might also mean I need longer screws. Um, and I think that might be one of the problems I've got. So let me grab that. There's also the possibility that that, that battery was um, out of power. So let's turn that off and let's get to the main event, which will be the DIZ. Hopefully I've got some charge in this. Now, I do find the DIZ interesting in that it drifts all right without the chassis, but you put the chassis on it and it drifts so much better. And I think that's just because it adds a bit more weight at the back. Um, so I've got mixed feelings about the DIZ too. Um, it required a lot of work. Now, compare it to the GLF-1. That GLF-1 has had almost no additional work on it in terms of polishing. And it is just every bit as smooth as the uh, DIZ V2 is. Um, and people say that, like, oh, like the Atomics are great once you do all that work. The GL Racing chassis, you get all of that without doing any of the extra work. So that's why I keep on saying the GLZs are like in a league of their own in comparison. So let me swap over the model and then I'll show you the uh, turning and everything as I always do. Turn off receiver. Uh, yeah, that's... The only problem with where I've placed the ESC is it means getting access to the power button is a bit difficult. Signal lost. Traxxas UDR, Hemet PO3, MA030. Actually, that's another vehicle I have to do a review of. So I actually worked out how to do a counter steer kit for the MA030 with off the shelf parts. Like no special diff, no special gears, um, and in fact you might actually already have the parts you need laying around on hand. Um, and you can do a almost 150% counter steer 
with just a single part swap and it is absolutely incredible when you do that oh and i forgot to turn the uh, how long are we at now we're at 40 minutes so no one on youtube is going to like the length of this video and that's kind of fine but as i said this is an initial thoughts video for people who are super desperate to see a review and some footage um they can they've got something to watch uh, everyone else can just wait until i get that footage out and there'll be more footage down the track anyway so just need to make sure that's planted there we go so and i don't have steering There we go. That steering is very, very slow, so I suspect this might be low on battery. I haven't had a chance to charge any of the cars, so we'll see how it goes. You normally see that um, that uh, it just keeps on going. Once you make a turn, it just keeps on going in the turn. So, so. As I said, I, I'm not very good at rear-wheel drifting, and I'm still learning, so... Oh, that was better. I'm still learning the, uh, the throttle control aspect of it. Um, but I can't do... So I can do really, really slow, large turns like that, that are not drifting. And I can do the really, really tight stuff, but I can't do medium or long drifts. So this is feeling very, very sluggish actually, and I suspect it's just a low battery issue. But I just wanted to get some footage of it. So it does work. It turns around like crazy. And let me just dial out the gyro. There go. Every time I've gone to do drifting practice with a rear wheel drive, I've always felt that the, uh, the gyro gets in the way. I know everyone installs gyros on it, and I did play around with it a bit, and it does make it easy to make that left-to-right transition, but I th I, I've normally got it turned down to basically nothing, so I don't know how much help it is. So I'm, I'm just trying to get those longer drifts in. Um, at the moment, I've got it turning too harsh, and it might be I'm just carrying too much weight on the back, and I probably want a bit more weight at the front. Um, the brass knuckles actually are really, really help, um, and they were kind of surprising. I, I didn't think they'd make a lot of difference, but um, they really seem to. Um, I just also recently installed some brass knuckles in my uh, 4x4, and that also seemed to help quite a bit, so... Oops. I also switched out to the, uh, the grip part of my track because I found the bottom of this chassis was... Uh, bottoming out on the fabric and then getting caught so okay so getting a bit better there you go so I actually dialed out the throttle exponential so I've got um, a lot more of the uh, trigger pull managing a very, very small range of the throttle curve and I got that almost I, I just dial that back and forward just so that I, I get a lot more granularity around that and I get a lot more control over the motor and uh, how much it's um, uh, and what speed it's going at and there we go oh that was almost there so yeah I, I, I'm at the point where I'm starting to understand rear wheel dr drift driving but not quite there yet like that would have been great if I had had a bit more throttle on it um, but yeah th this battery definitely feels like it's dying as well I'm also transitioning from left to right way too quickly and I need to really match what the car is doing and I only learned that in the last couple of days by watching YouTube videos it's one of the things they don't seem to mention in the how-to videos for real dry drifting but um Apart from the amount of work it took to get this chassis working, 
Um, it's been. A, I'm pretty happy with the results now. There's still some things to be resolved, and I think I've got a whole bunch of dying lipo cells which I need to go off and replace. But um, yeah, it, it took a lot of work to get here, but the the end results are actually fairly nice. The uh, the rest of it's basically on me to get better. Yeah, that's a bit better. Definitely loving the Ensotex uh, ESCs on this one. I probably need to get the second webcam set up and pointing at my finger so you can actually see what I'm doing. Um, I know they do that in the drone world a lot, and um, I think if I'm... I'm very tempted to do, once I get the drifting down, a series on how I learned to drift just to help others out. And I think being able to see what my finger is doing while the car is doing it um, would be fairly beneficial. Because I found that the in, intuitive, like you hear people describe it and you try and do that and it just doesn't work. Like I don't have enough time to tap the brake. My, uh, my trigger finger just is not quick enough. Um, and it's only getting worse. And so I've had to uh, try other tricks to um, get it. In fact, I probably need to dial the springs in and make the um, the spring a bit sharper. So that's it. I'm going to end this up shortly. Um, I'm going to continue to drift, but I'm going to wait till the batteries are almost out, so I'm going to charge them when that happens. Um, I hope you got something out of this. Um, expect a full review on all three of them. The review of the DRZ will be the one coming first, uh, followed probably by the SD trike um, and then the GLF-1. Um, I'll give you a spoiler now. Uh, I love the GLF-1. I love the trike even more. In fact, the trike is probably my most loved vehicle at the moment. And the DRZ, I'm liking the longer term prospects of it. Um, do I like the DRZ itself? I don't know. I'm going to have to pull out my Super Skeeter and give that another go. Um, and see how it compares to this. But I don't have enough drift chassis to say whether or not this is good in all honesty. Um, I do have an order for a GLD, which is the GL Drift Racer. And hopefully that'll be coming in the uh, the near future. Um, and then once I've got that, I'll be able to compare it. But um, it's definitely light years ahead of the MA03, um, at least for drifting. Uh, and it is a lot of fun, but it's a lot of effort. It's a, it, it is a big commitment. And I don't think you really want to do it as your first DIY build Mini Z type style chassis. You probably want to take on something a bit easier. Um, like the, even in the atomic range, there's better vehicles to start with than the uh, the DIZ, um, like the AMR or um, the DIZ itself would probably be easier, um, or even one of the all-wheel drives. But I'd probably recommend starting with the GL Racing because you will get end up with a really good working chassis, um, and it's very very hard to screw up. And then you'll understand the basics and uh, have a better idea of how to put the atomics together. Um, but that said, Atomic's improving, but uh, they're still not quite there yet to where I, I'm happy with them. I love them to death, but um, th th there's just that tiny bit more polish they need, and then they'd be perfect. So thanks for joining us. Um, expect the reviews, and um, keep on drifting. Have a good one.